in Jurassic Park, we were introduced to Dennis Nedry, a computer programmer who, who designed the system that would support Jurassic Park staff and who would eventually join up with Biosyn, the rival company of InGen, and would attempt to steal dinosaur embryos after shutting down the park system. However, during his escape, he would run into several bits of trouble and eventually would be found and killed by a Dilophosaurus. However, while Nedry's death in the film was played for mainly laughs and giggles, his punishment for, in the novel was far brutal more brutal. And if you are sensitive to gore, please click off this video. And now, let's begin. This is the true fate of Dennis Nedry. The sign said electrified fence, 10,000 volts, do not touch. But Nedry opened it with his bare hands. Now he dr drove inside of the park itself, no more than a mile from the east dock. He stepped on the accelerator and started to s speed through with the rain slashing the windshield. He was driving fast, a little bit too fast. He had to keep to his timetable. This damn storm, he thought, it might screw everything, because if Dodson's boat hadn't, wasn't waiting for him at the east dock when Nedry got there, the whole plan would be ruined. Nedry couldn't wait very long, or else he would be missed back at the control room. The whole... The whole idea of the plan was that he could drive to the east dock, drop off the embryos, and be back in a few minutes before anyone noticed. It was a good plan. Clever plan. Nedry worked on it carefully. This plan was supposed to make him $1.5 million. It was 10 years of income in a single tax-free shot. Nedry had been damn careful, even to the point of making dots some come and meet him in San Francisco before he got on the plane to the park. Actually, Nedry wanted to record the conversation that he had with Dodson and mention him by name on the tape, just so that Dodson did, wouldn't forget that he owed the rest of the money to Nedry. Nedry would, was going to include a copy of the tape with the embryos. In short, Nedry had thought of everything, except this damn storm. Some Suddenly, something dashed across the road. A white flash in his headlights. Must have been a possum. Amazing that little guys could survive out here. You'd think the dinosaurs would have a quick snack of that. He paused. Where was the dock? He was driving fast. He had already been gone for five minutes, but he should have been there. He was on the right track. Where was he? It was a sh shock to him when he came around the corner and saw that he... The road was terminated by a great six-foot concrete barrier blocking his path. He slammed the brakes and the jeep fishtailed, losing traction to an end-to-end -end spin, and for a horrified moment, he thought he was going to smash into the barrier. He knew he was going to smash. He spun the wheel frantically, and the jeep slid to a stop. The headlamps just a foot from a concrete wall. He paused. He obviously took a wrong turn. He could retrace the steps, but he had already been gone too long. He better try to find out where the hell he was. He got out of the jeep, feeling the heavy raindrops batter his head. It was a real tropical storm, raining so hard that it actually hurt. He glanced at his watch, pushing the button to illuminate the digital dial. Six minutes had already gone. Where the hell was he? He walked around the concrete barrier, and on the other side, along with the rain, he heard the sound of gurgling water. Could it be the ocean? Nedry hurried forward. His eyes adjusted to the darkness as he went. Dense jungle on all sides, raindrops slapping the leaves. The gurgling sound became louder. And then he realized he was at the river. Well, at the river, river where? The river went for several miles. Seven minutes had gone. You have a problem, Dennis, he said aloud to himself. As if in reply to it, there was a soft hooting cry of an owl in the forest. Nedry hardly knows. He, he was worrying about his plan. The plan, he was out of time. He, there wasn't any choice anymore. He had to abandon his plan. All he could do was go back to the control room, storm the computer, and somehow try to contact Dodson for a future meet to set it up for maybe the following night. Nedry would have to scramble to make it work, but he thought he could pull it off. 
computer automatically logged all the calls. After Nedry got through the dachshund, he would have to go back to the computer and erase the record of the call. But one thing was for sure, he couldn't stay out here. Nedry started to head back, heading towards the glow of the car's headlights. He was drenched and miserable. Then he heard a soft cooing cry once more, and this time he paused. That hadn't really sounded like an owl. It seemed to be close by in the jungle, somewhere off to his right. As he listened, he heard the crashing sound of under of the underbrush. Then he then there was silence. He waited and heard it again. It sounded distinctively like something big, something really big, big dinosaur perhaps. Get out of here, he said to himself. Nedry began to run. He made a lot of noise as he ran, but he didn't care because he could hear the animal crashing through the foliage still. It was coming closer, stumbling over tree roots in the darkness, clawing his way past dripping branches. He saw the jeep ahead. The lights were shining on the vertical wall, making him feel better. He paused in fear. The animal was already there, but it wasn't close. But it was still there. The dinosaur stood 40 feet away at the edge of the illumination from the headlamps. Nedry hadn't taken the tour, so he hadn't seen the different types of dinosaurs. But this one was strange looking. Ten foot tall body with that was ye yellow with black spots along with the head ran a pair of V-shaped crests that were a bright red. The, this dinosaur didn't move, but it gave its soft hooting cry. Nedry waited to see if it would attack, but it didn't. Perhaps the headlights from its jeeps frightened it, forcing it to keep its distance. The dinosaur continued to stare at him, and then suddenly smacked its head back in a s single swift motion. Nedry felt something s smack wetly against his chest. He looked down and saw a dripping block, glob of foam on his rain-soaked shirt. He touched it curiously, not comprehending. It was spit. The dinosaur had spit on him. It was creepy, he thought, and it was disgusting. He wiped it away instantly. Then the dinosaur spit back at him again, this time hitting his neck. He wiped it off immediately, but then started feeling this, a tingling burn on his neck and on his hand. It was almost as if he was touching acid. Nedry opened the car, car door, glancing back at the dinosaur one last time to make sure it wasn't going to attack. And then he felt a sudden excruciating pain in his eyes, stabbing spikes into the back of his skull. And he squeezed his eyes shut and grabs it to wipe the foamy substance out of his eyes. Spit! The dinosaur had spit in his eyes. Even as he realized it, the pain was overwhelming, and he dropped to his knees, disoriented, wheezing. He collapsed to one onto his side, his cheek pressed against the ground. His breath came in thin whistles. Through the constant, ever screaming pain that caused flashing spots to appear in his uh, in his vision, the earth shook beneath him, and Nedry knew the dinosaur was moving. He could he he could hear the dinosaur making its hoot and its piercing cry. Despite the pain, he forced he forced his eyes open to fight for his life, but he couldn't see anything except for those spots. And then he came to the realization he was blind. The hooting was louder, and Nedry scrambled to his feet, feet, staggered against the back of the side panel of the car. As a wave of nausea and dizziness swept over him, the dinosaur was close now. He could feel it coming closer. He was dimly aware of its snorting breath, but he still couldn't see it. He couldn't see anything. His terror was extreme. He stretched out his hands, waving them wildly in the air, to fend, try and fend off the attack he knew it was coming. And then he felt a new searing pain, like a fiery knife in his belly. And Nedry stumbled, reaching blindly to touch the ragged end of his shirt, and then a thick, slippery mass that was surprisingly warm came out. And with horror, he suddenly knew what he was holding. He was holding his own intestines in his hands. The dinosaur had tore him open, and his guts had fallen out. Nedry fell to the ground and landed on something scaly and cold. It was the dinosaur's foot. And then there was a new, searing, excruciating pain on both sides of his head. 
The pain grew worse, and as he was lifted to his feet, he realized that the dinosaur had his head in his jaws. And the horror of that realization was followed by one final wish from Nedry. That it would all be over soon. The way Crichton chose to kill De Dennis Nedry in the novel, being so violent, would not be used for the film. The film, of course, would play it as more of a surprise with the Dilophosaurus um, frill, as well as being for laughs for the kids. However, because, however, I would have really loved to see this in a future film. And with Dilophosaurus slated to make its ultimate return in Jurassic World Dominion, maybe we will get to see this scene properly introduced. And hopefully, this time, the Dilophosaurus will be an adult. But anyway, guys, what do you think of this moment? Is this a favorite from you guys? And would you love to see it? And if so, why? Leave that in the comments. And if you've enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a like. And if you want to join the hunt, hit the subscribe button. Be safe. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.